On November 22nd, 1963, I was having lunch in the ornate chairman's dining room at NBC. I was a vice president of news, but we had, we had taken over the, the dining room that day. When the butler came in with a silver tray and leaned over to me and whispered, I've heard on WNEW, Kennedy has been shot. And I got up without excusing myself and went to the headquarters, BOC, Broadcast Operations Center of uh, NBC. It was on the fifth floor, one floor down. <clears throat> and that's where everything took place when we had an emergency. It was a room about the size of a current sports utility vehicle. And you crowded at least six or eight people into it, and separated by a, a glass partition. And Bill Ryan, William Ryan, a correspondent, very good one, for NBC News, walked in about that time. And I said, go in and get on camera. And he said, what will I say? And I had a UP flash in my hand that said, flash, President Kennedy has been, Dallas, President Kennedy has been shot. And he said, what will I say? I can't go on with that. And I said, read it forwards, and then read it backwards, and then read it halfway, and then read the other half, and by that time, you'll have more to say. And he went in. He did a really very good job, really very good job. And a young man <clears throat> in the front part of this broadcast operations center turned around and said to me, rather petulantly, I think, when are we going back to local programming? And I said, son, why don't you go home? We're not ever going back to local programming. And while we didn't have a correspondent on the air from, uh, from Dallas at that time, uh, we followed the story from that moment on until the following Monday night after the Kennedy funeral without ever leaving the air. And without commercials, uh, was all, there were many people afterward asked me quite a number of times, how long did it take you to decide not to do any commercials? How big was the fight about not doing commercials? There was never even any discussion of it. Kentner just said, we'll drop the commercials. And that's all there was to it. We never discussed it at all. To the best of my knowledge, <clears throat> I didn't sleep during, the, during those days, from that time Friday until the following Monday. And I flew to Washington at one point during the, when Kennedy was lying in state uh, at the rotunda and it was midnight and there was some discussion somebody said There's nothing going on shall we go off the air and uh, Edwin Newman was at the Capitol rotunda and I said no we'll stay on the air stay on the air all night but don't have anybody talk just show the people passing the casket and it was a very effective way of doing it and I've always been proud of the fact that I did it I really believe that that rotunda part was extremely effective at the time. I feel that here is one place when television had an effect on the nation. I think the existence of that shot from the Capitol with people passing by the, the beer, the, the coffin of John Kennedy, had a calming effect because we forget how, how torn up the nation was at that time. This really was a traumatic national effect. The coverage was a voluntary, uh, instantaneous work of art by everybody involved in it at NBC from the time it started until the time it finished. And the, in the course of it, the, the, uh, the coverage, particularly of the funeral cortege in Washington, there was a moment when uh, there occurred the shot that I've always regarded as the greatest shot I've ever seen on television. And it was caused by, directed by, set up by mm. Charles Jones, who was one of our directors in Washington. He was, he was working for the pool, and he set up a camera at a low point so he could get the upward shot of the people coming out of the church when Mrs. Kennedy came out. And when young John John came out and saluted, I still think it's the best single most impressive, most dramatic television shot in the history of television. Uh, when uh, 
Oswald was shot, it was a Sunday morning, and we knew that Oswald was going to be moved from one place to another in, uh, in jail, moved from the jail to another jail for fear of his safety in uh, Texas. <clears throat> and I don't know why nobody else covered it. But it was a kind of a, a lull in the coverage all over, and people were thinking about what different to do. And we were carrying religious leaders in the morning. And I was at my office Sunday morning and uh, telling people what to do. And my friend Kettner called and said, what are we, what are we gonna do when they bring Oswald out? And I said, we have our best man, Pettit, down there. And uh, we have uh, Fred Reinstein, a good director, <clears throat> handling it, and we're prepared for anything that will happen. And he said, but you've got these priests on the air now. What are you, what are you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with these priests? And I looked up at the screen and what was on it then, and I said, we're going to say, thank you, Rabbi Finkelstein, and then we're, we're going to switch to Dallas. And he said, well, I just have a premonition about it. He, he was a newsman, but you know he had premonitions about a lot of things that didn't come about. But this one did. And so we switched to Dallas at a normal time when they were coming out. <clears throat> we didn't have to say thank you to the rabbi. We, the, the normal routine of, of Oswald being brought out seemed rather not too exciting at the particular point until the shots rang out. And uh, Pettit said, he's been shot, he's been shot. And then there was wild excitement. And uh, for the next hour, day, we had all kinds of various excitements going on up and down the streets in all of Dallas and all of New York for that matter. And uh, later, Tom Pettit and I were meeting and he said, you know, I don't remember what I said that night. And I said, well, I do. You said, he's been shot, he's been shot. He said, what a memory you had. <laughs> Didn't take much to remember that because it was a truly momentous occasion. 